Good morning, everyone. My name is Mukta Atre. I'm the project manager for this uh, Train 10,000 teacher program here at IIT Bombay. And uh, it is my privilege and great pleasure to invite, to welcome you and invite you here to take part in this uh, very unique uh, workshop, which is the first of its kind amongst our series of uh, teacher training workshops. Uh, we will be discussing why it is unique as the workshop uh, progresses. Uh, we have a tradition of starting exactly on time, so it's now my pleasure to invite Professor Kannan Modgalya to give the inaugural talk to all of us. Good morning. Thank you, Mukta, for this um, invitation. Um, my name is uh, Kannan Modgalya. I'm a professor um, in the Department of Chemical Engineering, Systems and Control, and Education Technology at IIT Bombay. I'm also the coordinator of the NME ICT projects at IIT Bombay. NME ICT stands for National Mission on Education through ICT. Uh, one of the flagship projects uh, of this mission is uh, the Talk to, uh, talk to 10,000 Teacher or Train 10,000 Teacher. We used to call it Talk to a Teacher. Then um, that Talk to a Teacher has uh, two components. One is uh, train 10,000 teachers, the other is spoken tutorial. So I got mixed up, OK? So it is uh, train 10,000 teachers. And it is through you uh, that will be done. So it's a unique methodology developed at IIT Bombay by my colleague, uh, Professor Fatek, who unfortunately could not be here. So um, I thought I would uh, give a brief overview of some of the activities that we do here. Um, NME ICT was uh, started in the year uh, 2009 to raise the levels of education in India. And um, it came with a uh, $1 billion uh, outlay. So it was 4,512 crore. In those days, on the day it was announced, the dollar was changing at 45 rupees, approximately 45, 46 rupees. Uh, it had uh, three components. One is to uh, provide connectivity. When the mission was uh, proposed, there were 400 universities. So it was proposed that all the 400 universities would get one GBPS connection. And out of that, all the affiliating colleges would further get connected. About 60% of the money was used to set, to set this up. Uh, in By some estimates, the bandwidth was given at about 5% of the cost to the uh, universities. And uh, MHRD paid 75% of it. So as a result, people who acquired bandwidth in those days got it for roughly about 1% of the commercial prices. They had to pay, but it was very little. Um, that was the major uh, component of this mission. The second component was content generation. So T10, KT comes under that. In fact, we, uh, in the first phase of this mission, first phase of this project, the Talk to a Teacher project had uh, trained 1,000 teachers as one of the components. Train 1,000 teachers and spoken tutorial. Now, train 1,000 teachers did so well that the mission director, Mr. Sinha, requested Professor Fatak to scale it up, to make it 10,000 teachers. So that's how it became 10,000 teacher in the second phase of our project. So that is one of the examples of uh, the content project, content generation projects supported by the mission, right? The mission has three components. One is the um, bandwidth, connectivity. Second is the content generation. I'm talking about content generation now. So um, in fact, these projects have done so well let me uh, show you uh, this in MHRD website itself. So eKalpa is a project, e content generation project funded by the same mission. Uh, eAntra is uh, done by our uh, uh, colleague in uh, computer science, Professor Kavi Arya. 
NPTEL you already know. So I just wanted to say that um, uh, these projects are done so well that MHRD decided to uh, host them in their home page, right? There were also um, spoken tutorial and uh, uh, T10KT on, the, on these pages. Um, not sure why they are not there right now. But it is an indication that, that these projects did very well and MHRD said that we would actually host them on our home page. The third um, project, uh, third component of the mission is uh, the low cost, uh, uh, it's actually a connectivity uh, access device, computing device. Uh, we started, we came up with Akash and the Akash project um, completed what it was supposed to do and then it went on to DGSND for rate contract and it got stuck because of some specification problem. Now it is going to come back again. But we were interested to, to improve it further. As a result, we came up with the, with the laptop. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring it just now. So it's a complete laptop that we have come up with as a continuation of the Akash project. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, on Saturday at 4 o'clock here, we handed a, uh, gave it on loan to 50 of our students, computer science students, who don't have their own laptop. It's uh, for a CS 101 course, which is a compulsory course at IIT Bombay. Uh, it has a lot of programming exercises. And uh, out of 450 students, 400 students have their own laptops and 50 students don't have theirs. So we thought it was an unfair competition. We did this last semester also. We are repeating it now. So uh, we believe that it is an unequal competition. I always give this example. If somebody gets a bright idea at um, 10 o'clock in the night, it will take only five minutes to try it out. He or she has to, to check it out, to, has to go all the way to the uh, computer center or department, uh, get the lab opened, uh, assuming that they have the permission then try it out, come back, and then of course if it rains, uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So I claim that these five minute ideas never get tested, never get tried out. If this is the case at IIT Bombay, you can imagine how it is in other institutions. The institutions where there are many day scholars uh, who don't have computers at home and who have to leave the colleges at five o'clock in the evening because the college bus is leaving. Right? They don't get time to try out at all, and these children actually mug up the programs because they don't have computers. They never get a chance to try out. So this, uh, by the way, this is available for those of you who are interested. There are colleges that have said that they would buy a few hundred of these and then use them as a computer lab because it has a good battery backup, four to eight hours. And so one can actually do a computer lab using that so that the computer labs can be given to the training and placement, the companies that come for recruitment. You all know that when the month of September comes, your students have difficulty accessing computer labs because these have been handed over to the recruiting companies like TCS, Infosys, and so on. I'm not blaming them. It is just that it is a logistical problem for about a month or two. And uh, in fact, I know one college that is going to buy 300 of these laptops and use them as computer lab in the afternoon and give it as loan to the day scholars so that they can take it, come back in the morning. So uh, this mission has done uh, uh, wonderful things. Uh, the successful story of this uh, T10KT um, itself is an example. Center for Distance engineering education program and um, uh, I used to be the head of that about uh, five years ago, uh, sorry it was in 2008. Uh, in 2008 um, we were transmitting courses live, in fact as I was the head of distance education program we transmitted live 100 courses as they happened at IIT Bombay. Okay, A course means uh, what you might call as a subject or a paper. 40 hours of uh, instruction, 
So we uh, actually transmitted about 5,000 hours. The classes uh, would happen in our uh, video studio and it would be transmitted live. So if a faculty member made a mistake, everybody would know. If a faculty member cracked a joke, everybody would know. Uh, so Mr. F.C. Kohli, who, was the, who founded TCS and who was also the chairman board of governors at uh, College of Engineering Pune, he said he wanted his students to get IIT experience. What is IIT experience? He said that when, um, when they see IIT faculty member making a mistake, they should realize that it is okay to make mistakes. They will realize. When IIT faculty member cracks a joke, they will feel that one doesn't have to be serious all the time. By the same token, they would see that every course, every lecture was delivered and delivered on time. And they would go and demand from their faculty members. If IIT faculty can deliver courses every lecture and on time, why can't you? And he wanted his faculty members to go and ask the students, IIT students do so much work, why are you refusing to work? So he said that, you know, the live transmission is something quite different, not like recorded course. Recorded course is like a book. Whereas in a live transmission, the pedagogy also comes, right? Uh, in fact, uh, in one year, one semester, they, uh, CYEP wanted to receive 25 courses and then um, I circulated that list to our heads and 13 of them were ready to transmit. You see, some courses may not have been offered at that time and some other courses, faculty members may not have been ready with the material, instructional material. You need, uh, you know, live transmission to thousands of people is a completely different ball game. It requires a lot of, uh, you know, preparation and so on. Still, we transmitted 13 courses and um, it was very well received. During that time, I used to go to, uh, I visited some colleges. I remember some interior college and they said, um, can you please also transmit a course, make available a course on communication. Because they said the students, although they are pretty smart, have difficulty in performing well in interviews. Okay? Uh, and have difficulty in getting jobs, will you please do that? We didn't do that because we didn't have a course at that time. Right? It also requires a lot of effort. Uh, so that's why this course is extremely important. Uh, although it is technical communication, by the way, which is uh, also very important for uh, all the uh, faculty members who are um, aspiring for higher degrees. And they have to write papers, they have to make presentations, and uh, progress reports, all kinds of things. And uh, conference papers, even for conference papers, unless it is written properly, it won't get, uh, um, in fact, for, uh, it won't get accepted. In fact, for a conference paper, because the time is very short, it will get rejected. There is no question of review, unlike a journal paper, where you have, you can always go back and say, let me improve it and try that. But conferences, it get rejected. So unless you write a good paper, it won't get accepted. So obviously, this is very good for um, uh, learning how to uh, communicate. That's, that, that is something that we don't teach properly. We don't have... Uh, because it's it's not um, uh, clearly um, you know formula based. This is a formula one two three four. Uh, you do this, uh, it will definitely work. That guarantee nobody is able to give. Uh, but yet, um, um, an attempt is being made here. Uh, probably we have something here which will say uh, we will have more or less some formula. You try this, you will attempt. You will address most of the issues. Then last 20, 30 percent, you add your uh, personal touch and make it a lot better. If that comes out, out of this course, it will be fantastic. So this course is um, extremely important. And uh, this course is going to be offered uh, in live. As I told you earlier, live transmission has its uh, benefits. Uh, it can be received by a lot of people. At one time, some people who were unhappy with this live transmission, um, they challenged us saying that 
uh, one of the biggest problems in the live transmission is that there will be too many questions. There will be too many questions and if you really want to answer them, there won't be enough time. Okay? So you cannot really scale it up beyond some point. But after having delivered some courses through this method, we realized that the kind of questions uh, that arises is mainly because of the way the lecture is delivered. Okay? So, if one person here has a question, 100 others will also have the same question. So, the number of questions is not too many. right? So, um, if you answer one question, you answer all of them. Not only that, you get to address the same problem from many different perspectives, which often does not happen in a small classroom. So, I would even go to the extent of saying that in some respects, this course with lot of uh, people, well prepared people, people who come with preparation. For example, here we are going to have, I think we will have the MOOCs uh, approach also, one week, one week MOOCs and then one week contact. So, by the time you come to the contact program or the faculty members when they come to the contact program, they will be, you know, well tuned. In fact, they will be already at some level because here communication is, uh, you know, um, some of the methods are being taught or shared and, this, and the participants already know most of the things. So, they are already at a very high level. So, you will see that in a large uh, gathering of this sort, uh, you will have um, questions from different perspectives being addressed, answered. Um, it will be, there will be a lot of time spent for discussion and that way I would say that this course may turn out to be better than uh, even uh, small courses, small contact programs. Because in a small contact program, you may not get to analyze all the perspectives. The other uh, reason, I mean, some people complained about this course being, you know, large, you know, 10,000 people, but we, uh, we found that when it was made from 1,000 to 10,000, the average age of the participants came down dramatically. Because otherwise, if you have, of course, if you know, you know about QIP programs, unless you reach 55 years, you won't get to go to a QIP. Not because of the age limit, it's just that you have to be senior most or should have served enough number of time. Whereas, somebody who is just starting their career, 25 years old, 30 year old, they are the people who will benefit the most and they get stopped. So, we found that phenomenon even in 1000 teachers. When we went to 10,000 teachers, almost any college could send any number of their faculty members. Okay? That allowed everybody to come. The other thing that it really benefited is I am happy to see a large number of uh, lady participants. In fact, we found that in some courses, we reached even uh, like something like 45, in excess of 45 percent uh, participants being uh, females, uh, which is never the case in the QIP courses that we conduct. When we conduct a QIP course here for 30 uh, people, hardly one or two will be ladies. How many people can leave their homes, families and then come over here? So, this method uh, allows that. So, from many, many aspects, I can go on talking about the benefits of this, um, but um, I am really happy that uh, you could all come to uh, this uh, orientation program and uh, you know take this message back and then you have an important role to play because this is the coordinators program. The program is effective because every coordinator uh, learns the processes, okay? not necessarily the subject matter. Subject matter you all know, but what is involved so that these um, whatever in this uh, course five to 10,000 people, I do not know the exact number, that number will in fact uh, maybe registration will start and you know people will start registering. I am pretty sure that there will be anywhere from five, five to 10,000 uh, participants and the success of this program will depend on how well it is organized at every center, how well it is organized at every center. And that can happen only if you do it uh, well. You have the right team to take care of things, make sure 
in fact i would say that it has to be like a uh, like a armed forces it has to go on schedule it has to happen uh, it has to be a clockwork right and people have to listen to you you may even have to be dictatorial just to get things done make sure things happen at the right time right and um, and if people have to do some homework you have to enforce that so there are many things involved you will learn the method here and then you will go back and um, uh, help uh, uh, deliver this uh, program um, so i think uh, uh, i will not take too much of uh, this time i think there are many uh, faculty members here uh, i don't think i will uh, take up my time to introduce them uh, it will be done later um, so i want to um, uh, uh, wish you all the best once again and when you have time please uh, walk around the campus uh, it's a beautiful place uh, it rains once in a while uh, as a result it is uh, reasonably cool but uh, luckily not flooded and um, apparently leopards come during uh, monsoon time but uh, snakes snakes of course leopards come because apparently dogs are a delicacy and we have lots of dogs in the campus and they won't bite you don't worry uh, just be careful when you go uh, when you walk around in the dark areas uh, take a torchlight or uh, stick or something now i'm just joking just uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, enjoy and then uh, uh, get to interact with the uh, uh, faculty members if there is a question please do ask them because that may be an important question because if you do that if that question is answered properly maybe it'll help a lot of people so uh, uh, wish you all the best and uh, this uh, once again this project is funded by national mission on education through ict uh, it's an initiative of mhrd government of india we are really grateful to the mission directors and the uh, ministry itself uh, the first mission director was mr nk sinha then uh, it, it was pravin prakash uh, mr pravin prakash now it is sri um, sp goel they have been very uh, enthusiastically uh, supporting it and uh, we have a standing committee we have project approval board there are many uh, aspects uh, many governing bodies and all of them have been uh, supporting this uh, uh, quite well and uh, so i want to thank all of them and uh, i hope uh, that you would uh, get the maximum benef benefit out of this and you will also help uh, all the participants i told you 5000 to 10000 participants Uh, get the best out of this uh, this is taxpayers money so let us use it wisely let us use this. it's a great opportunity let us use it wisely so um with that uh, um i wish you all the best goodbye thank you prof samad galya thank you very much uh, i would uh, now like to invite professor sundar uh, this particular course in iit has been developed about 5 years ago and it has been developed uh, by about a team of 10 people across uh, various disciplines in iit i'd like to uh, ask professor sundar to uh, introduce all of them to you here professor sundar okay uh, hi uh, um i'm sundar from chemical engineering i'll just introduce to you uh, the team of uh, some of them who have come here but um, uh, others i'll introduce to you uh, when the uh, they take their lectures so this uh, course will be conducted by a large team and uh, just as you will be coordinating in your centers i'm just coordinating this course here but the uh, content is provided by several faculty i'll just introduce uh, sahana murthy sahana is from uh, uh, educational technology uh, uh, department uh, Partha Sarathi is from the humanities. Um, Virendra Sethi is from environmental sciences, and Ashish Pandey is from School of Management. Oh, uh, Lena is uh, also is there from uh, School of Management. Is there anybody else? Okay. 